Woohoo! Overcast day. Today's Saturday. Uh, they're projecting rain for a little later on, so uh, we're gonna try and get out and beat the rain. Uh, looks like a good wind. So we're gonna go uh, on the bike path for a little bit and over to. Uh, I might drop into uh, the bike shop. Not sure yet, but I am going towards that way. We might drop in and say hi to Bruce and Mary. Um, we're going. To, we're only going to get about, I think, just 24, 25 miles. Where I branch off, I can either make it 24 miles. If I branch off a little farther, I can make it 30. We'll see how the legs feel, and uh, we'll go from there. But hey, on this ride, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, rebranding of a company, because that's what we're in the final process of. So uh, hey, let's get started. Woohoo! How you doing? Good. Nice day, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, I said we talked about the rebranding of the company. Technically. We are starting another company. The old company, Conversation Concepts, will still be in existence, but it will only be as a wholesale company. GoFiggy.com will only be as a retail business. And I'm gonna give you a little history on me with the company, and then we'll go into it further. I haven't been associated with the company in one way or another for about 23 years. Even when I wasn't with the company at several other jobs, because this is my third stint, they would call me to do some side projects for them or come in and evaluate certain things. So, my association in those 23 some odd years might have been off a few years where I didn't do anything. But I've always kept in touch with the owner and done some stuff for him, like I said, on the side. So, I rejoined the company over four years ago, full time. I had been doing, uh, I was running a warehouse facility for a company that wanted to move and outsource the business to Pennsylvania. So I spent the summer down in Pennsylvania helping them set up. In that time, I was also technically <laughs> the warehouse manager for Conversation Concepts. While I was the warehouse manager at the summer company, and before them, another company. So, I was technically the warehouse manager at two facilities, two different companies, for almost three years. 
I would come into conversation concepts at night, at the regular job, get stuff done, evaluate what was going on, leave uh, directions for the other guys, so on and so forth. So, and it worked. <laughs> Strangely, it worked. So, when my assignment was done with the other company in Pennsylvania, I didn't want to transfer down there. And the two owners, Richard and Richard, a conversation concept, father and son, asked if I would just come straight forward with them. Well, I won't go into why I left the second time. The first time I left, business was declining. I should say, second time I came back, it was because they were selling the place and they needed some stuff done before they could get the sale done. So I came in to straighten some stuff out and uh, the new owners wanted me to stay on. I stayed on. Uh, they couldn't make a go of it. Several years into it, they gave it back to the original owners, blah, blah, blah. And at that time, myself and the, the father, not the son, the father, they're, they're both 50-50 owners. We were constantly in conflict about inventory and ordering. Because he had complete control over that. And it was asinine the stuff we were ordering. And as you can see, if you've watched any of my videos where I go across the street, and you see tons of product, a lot of that stuff is because of asinine ordering. And I have products, certain breeds of dogs, where I've got five, six hundred years worth of inventory. So, we had a conflict there. He didn't want to give it up. I left. Well, when they both reached out to me to come back, we sat down. And I told him right out, I love his dad, but his dad has to give up control of purchasing, inventory control, let me do what I gotta do. They gotta commit to me getting all the numbers right in the system because they had so many bogus numbers in the inventory system. The way of doing things was just half assed you can't do it that way. I'm a numbers person and you're gonna go by numbers, so I knew it was gonna be a a tough sell, but as I told him, it's the only way and at the same time you gotta give me more control and I wanna lead the company in a different direction. Because they never changed with the way business has changed. You know, they always blame poor sales, retail sales, on the economy. And I call that bullshit. It wasn't the economy that was doing it. It was their lack of vision and not focusing on where retail was going in the internet. So, they made that commitment, and at the same time, I did tell them, look, it's the last time I walk in your doors. If I leave, I'm never coming back. Don't call me to fix it. Don't call me to ask me questions. When I'm done, I'm done. His dad retired two years ago. His dad runs the Amazon Ponder business when his sister's out of North Carolina. And I had to spank their hands a few times. It's getting better though. But uh, this company has never spent any money on marketing. And I had a marketing company lined up and uh, it took me two years to finally get the owner to sit with him, open his eyes, and also, I said, I'm a numbers guy, and if I show you numbers, and if, we'll get over it once we get past the wind, we'll go over the rest of it.
So what I do is I do all the cost analysis also. So if we're second selling on a secondary site, like Amazon, eBay, I do the cost analysis of what we're making. And it's the same way with all these wholesalers. Now look, my top 10 wholesalers, which is 94% of my business with those top 10 wholesalers, only sell online. So, I'm just gonna give you a number. If we do a million dollars worth of business, with those top 10 wholesalers, right? And I take those top 10 wholesalers and I know what they're selling their stuff for. It's easy enough. I know their markup. And out of that, those wholesalers combined are making $6 million. Okay, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to think, would I rather make the six million or the million. So, my whole thing that I've been hitting with since I came back was you have to take the business back. If I delve it deeper, those wholesalers percent of the time when they order from us they only order when they get a discount on that wholesale price so figure that number up add another million to that that's seven million okay so my fight since I came back was to get him to see the big picture and it's been hard up until the beginning of this year, when he finally the light bulb went on. It's hard because I understand you respect your dad. And his dad and him started a company. And his dad really had a lot of control. But his dad couldn't see where the future was. And he was reluctant to change and reluctant to spend money but in order to make money you're going to spend it so we are getting closer and closer to launching gofigure.com and uh, it's going to take us in a whole new direction got a lot of good ideas for it uh, excited to see what happens now I have to get him the Sun to also be realistic once gofigure.com launches doesn't mean the first month you see this incredible amount of business roll in second third fourth fifth you have to plan it out. You have to stick to a strategy. And you have to have the vision, the long-term vision of where it's going. So, I sit with him and we go over and over and just have to constantly remind him because I also know that in past, they've done stuff. Oh shoot, it didn't take off. It's been two weeks. Oh, what a failure. No. You didn't put anything into it. Nobody knew about it. You're bad. So. A lot of, a lot of cool stuff coming. A lot of work still to be done. But. Uh, as we get closer to the launch. I'll keep you posted. We'll do some kind of video on it. Hey, how come it always ends up that I end up doing a lot of climbing?
Oh, wait a minute. I don't live in flatland country. Don't. Like I said on the intro, they said scanning thunderstorms rolling in this afternoon, so. It's going to be real interesting once gofiggy.com is launched. <laughs> the wholesalers are going to figure it out real quick. And there are changes in the wholesale business coming up for 2019. So, like I said, it's going to be real interesting for a while now. I know you've heard me mention it in a few videos with the back acting up but I have severe arthritis in my back and also three bulging discs which uh, play havoc on my sciatic nerve and uh, all this rain the moisture in the air, no matter how much I stretch, the bat just doesn't get loose. So it's definitely taking its toll on my climbing. And with my left arm still not completely healed, that doesn't help. Typically on a climb like this, I would stand most of the way. But I just don't have the strength in the left arm to do it for long. And that's why I haven't done the thigh burners in the berg. Because I have to stand and climb on those. And the left arm just can't do it. Not over and over like that. I got another doctor's appointment in a week and a half. So, I know it's getting attached wrong, but I'm not getting the strength back as quick as I thought it would. But the, the benefit of that, that I am spinning a little more. I've always liked to be a masher. Old dogs do learn new tricks. <laughs> On the back way home. Going to scenic room home. Woohoo!
That was a nice ride. Went out, uh, should have waited a little longer after breakfast. The first and third Saturday every month, uh, we have a men's breakfast. A bunch of us guys get together. I ate way too much. Didn't let it settle. <laughs> should have maybe waited another hour before I really went out. Because breakfast is about right here right now. <laughs> but hey, it's all good, man. I'm chasing in and out of uh, sunshine and dark clouds. Supposed to get some thunderstorms, so I wanted to get the ride in early. Only did about 26 miles. We'll do double that tomorrow. But hey, time for some hot dogs and Klondike bars. Refuel. <laughs> hey, thanks for riding along, man. Stay safe.